Hirsch. He is, of course, the author of the stunning series in New Yorker magazine on the use of torture by U.S. military and intelligence services in the wake of 9-11, and more recently, several pieces also in the New Yorker on Bush administration plans for a war in Iran. Please welcome two indispensable witnesses to our time, Scott Ritter and Cy Hirsch. These mics on, can you all hear us? What I'm going to do is just do what um, I did the last time I was here, about a year ago, when we were talking about another country, another success story. And um, I guess I'll, um, I'll ask Scott a couple of questions. Before I begin, I guess I'll uh, give you, um, this is sort of a house of God. I'll give you my, my version of a daily prayer, which is the, uh, simply is that, let's see. By my count, uh, the bad news, there's uh, 830 more days left in the reign of King George II. And the good news is that uh, tomorrow morning there'll be one less one, one fewer day. And that's about the only good news we have, folks. Um, uh, if you think you've seen anything, wait till you see George Bush as a lame duck president. But that's not what we're talking about. We don't have to get into how bad it is. It's bad. It's, you know, we might as well just, we're now talking about future bad. Um, so Scott, in your book, you write at some point, uh, you list a, um, you have an account of some of the things that are going on today uh, inside Iran. Uh, you say, um, Israel and the United States were carrying out, this is on page 147, et cetera, were carrying out a full court press to try and identify and locate secret nuclear facilities inside um, uh, Iran. Uh, Israel made heavy use of its connections to uh, the Iraqi Kurdistan and to Azerbaijan to set up covert intelligence cells inside Iran, whose work was allegedly supplemented with specially trained commandos entering Iran disguised as local villagers. The United States was conducting similar operations using Iranian opposition forces, in particular the MEK, that's the Mujahideen cult, which is a terrorist group defined by us as a, uh, an, an one-time anti-Saddam, now anti-Iran group that is, works very closely still with us despite its uh, being listed as a terrorist group. And um, he, 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 you describe um, um, using, um, using opposition, opposition forces inside Iran and the MEK to conduct cross-border operations under the supervision of the CIA. The U.S. has also made use of its considerable technical intelligence collection capabilities, focusing the attention of imagery and electronic eavesdropping satellites, etc., uh, for operating along Iran's periphery. Uh, the problem was that neither the Israelis nor the United States could detect any activity whatsoever that could point to a definitive location um, on the ground where secret nuclear weapons activity was taking place. A couple questions. Um, says who? I haven't read this in the New York Times. You don't source it. Um, what's the source and what do you know? And how, how do you know this? Well, as I mentioned in the back where I talk about sources, um, most of that information is readily available in the press, not the American press. So you're not going to read about it in the New York Times. Uh, you're not going to read about it in the Washington Post. You probably won't read about it in most mainstream English language newspapers. But, you know, we used to have an organization in the CIA called FBIS, the Foreign Broadcast um, Information Service, that would translate the newspapers of the various nations around the world to give you a literally a bird's eye view of what's going on in that country. So if you read the Azeri press, for instance, you'll find out that uh, the Israeli uh, Mossad has upped its uh, efforts to build a station in Azerbaijan. And the Azeri press will delve into that more. Why does the Mossad want to build a station operating? There's a couple reasons. One, the Mossad is working with the Azeri population, you know, the, there is a Jewish minority in Azerbaijan uh, that has immigrated to Israel. And so there's a number of Azeri Israelis that the Israeli government now is bringing back to Azerbaijan to work this issue. This is spelled out in the Azeri press. So if you want to get some good insights, um, read the Azeri press. Read the Turkish press. The Turkish press will also talk about what's going on in Iran and Azerbaijan. This will give you the leads. And then because I'm not an active in-service intelligence officer anymore, I will take these leads and call friends who are active 
serving intelligence officers. And while they're not going to divulge classified information, I'll say, hey, I read something where certain activities are taking place. Can you uh, comment on this news? We'll sit down over uh, some beers, and they'll comment. And then you dig even further. And I'll tell you that I wrote the book before I went to Iran, but when I got to Iran and I talked to uh, Revolutionary Guard commanders, um, what surprised me is that they knew all this. The Iranians were very cognizant of what was going on in, Azer, in, in, in the Azeri section of I, I, Iran, in the Kurdish section. Uh, they could quote, uh, you know, <laughs> chapter and verse about what the CIA is up to, what the Israelis are up to. But, you know, again, the bottom line is, uh, why don't I footnote this? For probably the same reason why a lot of people don't footnote things. Because if I commit to a specific piece of information coming from a specific written source, that means that another piece of information that I don't commit to a specific written source, where'd that come from? Well, maybe it came from a human source. Now I've just made it easier in this day and age for those who don't want factual information to get in the hands of the average American citizen, those who want to keep American foreign policy and national security policy secret from the Americans they're supposed to be protecting, They'll go after these people, and you know they go after these people, and I'm going to do everything I can to ensure that I don't facilitate harm coming to, from those who have the courage to assist me in trying to get facts out to people so they can know more about this problem we call Iran. Why don't you think the... Uh, why doesn't um, my colleagues in the American press do better with this story? Well, one of the, the, the big problems is, and, and here goes the grenade, uh, Israel. The second you mention the word Israel, uh, the nation Israel, the concept Israel, uh, many in the American press become very defensive. Uh, we're not allowed to be highly critical of the state of Israel. Uh, and, when you, and the other thing we're not allowed to do is discuss the notion that Israel and the notion of Israeli interests may in fact be dictating what America is doing. That what we're doing in the Middle East may not be to the benefit of America's national security, but to Israel's national security. But see, we don't want to talk about that because one of the great success stories out there is the pro-Israeli lobby that has successfully enabled uh, themselves to blend the two together so that when we speak of Israeli interests, they say, no, we're speaking of American interests. Um, it's, it's interesting that APAC and other um, elements of the Israeli lobby don't have to register as agents of a foreign government. It would be nice if they did because then we'd know when they're advocating on behalf of Israel or they're advocating on behalf of the United States of America. Uh, I would challenge the New York Times to sit down and do a critical story on Israel on the role of Israel's influence, the role that Israel plays.